Students are celebrating Uber's return, but the company's unethical dealings should give everyone second thoughts. I'm Zach Price, and this is Opinion. When they left Austin in May 2016, Uber claimed that drunk driving would increase in their absence. Instead, the city of Austin showed that they can get along just fine without them by keeping DWIs level and increasing Capital Metro services. The apps that have come into Austin since Uber left, Ride Austin, Fair, and Fasten, have shown themselves to be more than just a stopgap and are more worthy of Austinites' money because they're committed to user safety. Each driver goes through a city-run fingerprint scan and background check. Instead of changing to abide by these new regulations, Uber moved on to lobbying at the state level. This eventually resulted in Governor Greg Abbott signing House Bill 100, a bill that established a far more lax series of statewide regulations, completely destroying the idea of local control. The fight originated over a series of Austin City Council regulations designed to combat sexual assaults. In 2015, at least 27 sexual assaults by ride-hailing drivers were reported to the Austin Police Department. The city addressed this in part by mandating city-run background checks, backed by fingerprint scans for all drivers. Uber was highly opposed to this plan, calling it an unnecessary restriction that would make life more difficult for their drivers. Any one of these incidents on its own would be evidence of a corporation with ambiguous morals, but taken together, they are indicative of a complete disregard for consumer safety and labor rights. So download the Ride Austin app, check out a Capital Metro schedule, hell, invest in a new pair of walking shoes. Just please don't give Uber your business. So, what do you think? Let me know in the comments below.